right, our next video is one that I recorded back in October of 2019. It's a walk-in freezer that had several problems, which we'll go into detail while we watch the video. And then at the end there, we're gonna go ahead and go back over some of those things. So let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what happens. Got a freezer here that's uh, got some ice issues. It's a little crammed in here. And uh, somebody had the defrost set up for every four hours, six defrost every 24 hours. And basically result is all the ice on the ceiling, ice on the fans, but yet, and for as much as 40 some minutes, our coil's clean. So we don't have any buildup on the inside. So it's a little, uh, it's in a kitchen area. Yeah. Defrost set too long and too many of them. And the termination switch probably doesn't seem like it's working. It's got the timer going. We're at 13 minutes so far. We're 23 minutes into it. Coil is defrosted. Check in here. We've got our limit switch. Looks like it's broke loose. That should be replaced and the termination switch looks like it's newer but whether it's wired up is my question because we're definitely it we're definitely done uh, with the defrost all right we just kicked out at 27 minutes so the termination is working which is a good thing and you can hear it building up so the delay does seem to be working but we really could use some curtains over here. The, as soon as they walk in, they just the heat pours in. The, uh, they said it got worse here this summer as the humidity got uh, higher. So we're gonna get, uh, get these cleaned off. We're gonna reduce the defrost down to four, possibly three. <clears throat> and uh, kind of see what we got from there. Our sight glass is full, time clock was holding temperature. It was fairly newer. And it looks like uh, they changed it uh, back in uh, October 15. All right, this is the condenser unit. We have a nice full sight glass. And the time clock here was set up for literally uh, the defrost clock here is literally set up for six defrost for 24 hours. It was set for as much as 50 minutes. So we're going to drop it down to about 32 and do it four times for 24. See how that goes. Go up there and clear out that uh, grill up there and see how it responds. They really need some curtains though to keep the humidity levels down. Finally got all the ice off of the grills. This took forever. Got all that out. We just used water. We're gonna check superheat and see how how that is. They don't have any suction ports to tie on to, so luckily this is where the smart probes are going to shine because I can hook this down in the basement to the condenser and I can check the superheat. So that's the next step now. All right, we're making adjustments on the uh, superheat right now. It came in at like high 20s, almost 30 at first. Gave it a little while to stabilize. Ended up opening the valve up. Just double checking it even down here at the compressor just to make certain that, you know, I'm not getting any uh, inaccurate readings and stuff. And uh, that's not the case. And then just in case to see whether or not the TXV's got a plug or stuff like that we went ahead and got our uh, liquid temp and pressures there and calculated subcooling and it's only like two 
so we're not extremely high or anything like that. So everything for the most part is looking really good. We're still solid on our sight glass there. Our box is uh, zero uh, and we're running about 18 pounds suction and about 203 head. And our super heat right now is around nine and a half. It's fluctuating a little bit, just stabilizing down. But uh, between that, maybe adding some curtains, uh, all these things combined, I think we had uh, a good place to start along with the long or multiple deep frost back to back to back to back, hanging in there longer than it needs to. The biggest thing I'm doing here is talking to the customer, getting all the history on it and, you know, figuring out is there something that's missed, you know, is, how long has it been doing this, whatever the case is. And um, so we're going to finish this thing out here and make sure that we're on the right track. And then once we're for certain of that, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. All right, so I ended up going back to this customer about a year later to work on a reach-in cooler. And while I was there, I ended up asking them how did the walk-in freezer ended up working for them after I had worked on it because I hadn't heard anything uh, for almost a year and uh, hadn't been back. They told me everything had been working great. They haven't had to have no one else out since that time, so no more ice or anything like that to deal with. They ended up not doing any of the modifications as far as doing a curtain on it, so great. I mean, they were able to get away with not having to do those things, so that's wonderful. It appears that the TXV adjustment was one of the big things there, along with removing the extra two defrosts. My philosophy was the more defrost we go into, the more we're bringing the temperature up, the more moisture we're putting into the room. So we wanted to eliminate that and only do as much as what we needed to. The superheat, like I mentioned in the video, was somewhere in the high 20s, mid 20s, something like that. So either the last company just swapped out the TXV and never, du never double checked it, or they didn't adjust it when the box was at temperature, which is a mistake that I've made in the past. And that's something you definitely don't wanna rush until the box is at temperature because uh, it will change as the box drops. Uh, I ended up setting that at six degrees to eight degrees area for the superheat, and that's generally always worked good for me. It seems to be what I've always read as being the area that you're shooting for. I uh, ended up uh, making sure, like I said, there was only four defrost instead of the sixth. Uh, the termination switch appeared to be working good because we timed it out and it shut off, I think, at right at 27 minutes. Uh, I set the timer as a backup somewhere around 32, I believe it was, and uh, the refrigerant charge checked out fine, uh, which, you know, that's something you definitely want to check if the TXV has uh, been restricted like this one was with Sahe Superheat. Uh, once that superheat uh, starts to drop, it opens up more refrigerants going through the coil. Make sure you're now not low and you're flashing off in your sight glass, which was one of the things I made sure we did. Uh, but uh, I was really gr glad to hear the customer said they weren't having no more problems. And that reassured me that what I did was a good practice and everything worked out good in the end. So if you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, you definitely know what to do by now. Be sure to check out our Facebook page, HVACR Survival, for all the little things that I may not make into a video or the pictures and things like that. So there's a lot of things getting posted here and there. And it's a great forum for any of the new guys that want to share information and ask questions without being intimidated. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Stay safe out there and we will catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.